In this video, we're going to show you how to post-process your TerraFlex collected data with TerraFlex Premium and Trimble's Terra Office software for ArcMap. And we're going to focus on the automatic cloud post-processed workflow as opposed to the manual, which we will discuss in another video. So we'll be starting here in ArcMap, and you'll see the Terra Office toolbar there on the right. Uh, by signing in here, we're actually connecting our named user to our TerraFlex license as well as our Terra Office license. And we'll check to make sure that the toolbar is turned on as well. And finally, we'll go to extensions to make sure our extension is enabled for Terra Office. Next, we're gonna go ahead and bring in our geodatabase, and we'll probably wanna take a look at that to see you know, if we've set up domains so that we can have drop-down menus and a proper data dictionary for our data collection. We'll also review our coordinate system and vertical datum. Next, we'll go to the properties of the GDB and look at the actual domain. We'll see we have cap color for hydrants, manufacturer, year manufactured, and a bunch of other various domain drop-down menus representing our data dictionary. You'll see we do have attachments for every feature class, and we've named things in a meaningful way. Let's bring it into ArcMap. We could, of course, symbolize things, but right now we're going to bring in some background imagery and some reference data uh, just so that going into the project, we kind of are in the right area. Now let's go ahead and save our map document. And then we'll go ahead and go into our Terra Office administration window where we can manage our projects. Here we're going to go ahead and create at the bottom left a new TerraFlex cloud project. We won't be doing direct as that's more of a disconnected workflow. You'll see it can be used. We'll start and run through the wizard here. The first step, we have to pick our connect project, which is essentially a folder in the cloud. Uh, most folks will have one here. We're going to choose testing ABQ. We'll go ahead and choose the layers we want within the table of contents. Click next. Here we're going through this really quick, but basically we're adding metadata for each field so that we can capture things like PDOP, coordinates, uh, Z values, accuracy reporting, device type, those types of things for each one of these feature classes. And this is just good metadata and good practice to use these, whether you think you're going to use them or not. We can also set accuracy thresholds. I don't typically use them, but I think we'll go ahead and set a few uh, for argument's sake. And we will allow the field user to override the accuracy threshold. I'm also manually adding, you'll see here, the X, Y coordinate on all of the point data sets, just so that it stores the northings, eastings in my coordinate system automatically. And I kind of like that option, but it is not defaulted. And again, here we'll see we we're setting some accuracy requirements. Uh, these are set in metric currently with the software. We are going to allow the user to override and click Next. This is our project geodetics, looking at the database coordinate system, the map coordinate system, if we were going to use a transformation, and of course our vertical datum, mean sea level G818 CONUS. This is important because we want to pick automatic. That is the workflow we're testing. The manual workflow allows for choosing your own base station. Automatic will let the TerraFlex cloud automatically handle it for you. Here we're going to build a quick real-time configuration for SBAS or WAS, free correction source here in North America. And it's just best to use this in the field even if we're going to post-process. It's a nice backup. Step through the wizard here, make sure we check the real-time config we built. Hit next, give the project a name, publish. It says it's published and now it's running through uploading this stuff to the TerraFlex cloud. And we'll go ahead and click OK and finish. And here we are about to sync our data back down from the field. So now we're making sure that we have the right project selected here in Terra Office. And then we're going to go ahead and open the dockable window here to download the forms. You can filter various forms here. And there's a couple of check boxes that can help you do some more filtering. We go ahead and download forms and you'll see we've got 12 here to review. We'll click OK and review the individual features or forms here. You'll see they're being interactively highlighted here in ArcMap. And we can also zoom to them 
So if we actually select a feature, it says waiting, right? That means it has not been post-processed. You can also uh, check for only processed forms here. You can filter by layer and you can choose to mark forms as downloaded or not. Now keep in mind that I have not waited for the Terraflex automatic post-processing in the cloud to happen. And I'm doing this on purpose so that you can see what happens if you prematurely download before post-processing takes place. Now that I know that the data has been processed, I'm going to check only processed forms and click download forms. It generally takes anywhere from one to three hours on an hourly base to close its files out and be available, and sometimes upwards of 24 to 36 hours, depending on the base station that's being used. Now we'll go ahead and zoom in here to some of these features. You'll see we have 12 again, right? Because I deleted and re-downloaded only the process forms, the ones that have been differentially corrected. We can look at the attribute table here of one of the features and you'll see it's carrier corrected, post-processed, the accuracy three by five hundredths, and then the project name as well as all the other metadata that I included. And I did that in the project setup. Here's some of our line work. If we take a look at this. I didn't fill out any attributes really to speak of here, uh, but it is carrier corrected post-processed and has very good accuracy there. Now let's go ahead and click the identify tool and identify one of our points. We'll see the attributes here, but also you'll notice there's attachments because there was a picture taken. Take a look there. You can see that storm structure in the distance. And if we take a look here at another feature I took, uh, you'll see there's an irrigation control box there. And that will do it for our video today where we showed you how to create a Terraflex project within TerraOffice, sync the data, download the data after collection, and finally review that data. We appreciate you joining us for another Altera Central technical video. Until next time.